Yes, uh, title of my presentation is uh, Hull and Propeller Efficiency Monitoring. It's uh, quite a serious title, and uh, I uh, received some help of uh, a captain, Mr. Uh, sorry, is it working? Okay. So, Mr. Captain Haddock is helping me uh, a little bit with a sort of uh, subtitle, which is uh, a little bit less serious, but still about the same uh, project, uh, same uh, subject. Uh, it's about the fuel bill, of course, and the screaming out, uh, uh, I think, a very uh, nice subtitle, which I didn't dare to uh, use as the main title, uh, because it's maybe a little bit uh, too confronting. So I think a lot of you already know FAF Instruments as a company. Uh, we're mainly known uh, for our Fiscosense viscosity sensor, which is on board of about 70% uh, of the ships running heavy fuel. So that's quite a lot of ships. It's just a small sensor, but we are there. And also we supply a lot of flow meters to ships and a lot of other sensors. But uh, the main subject of this presentation will be uh, the PT tow flow meters the torque sensors and our thrust and torque sensor. First of all, I'd like to summarize uh, our torque sensor, the T-Sense, which is on the market now for uh, almost five years. It it's, uh, contains an optical sensor, which can be installed by a shipyard or a ship owner themselves, if they like to. And uh, one of the big advantages of the optical sensor is that you don't have to recalibrate the system every six months, like you have to do with the strain gauges. When you have strain gauges, you have to glue them to the shaft. The glue will elder, and due to eldering of the, the glue, you get uh, a different uh, offset of the strain gauges, and you get a different output. So that is the reason why you have to recalibrate. Our system doesn't need, uh, let's say, a lot of recalibration. It's okay when you do it every uh, year or every two years. So we sold more than uh, 600 ships, and about 60% of them is together with our uh, PT2 flow meters, positive displacement flow meters, which include uh, a pulse sensor and a PT100 temperature sensor. And one of the main things is over here the uh, optical sensor, which uh, contains a detector cell which is uh, divided into uh, four sections, A, B, C, and D. And also we have a uh, LED, which is illuminating the detector cell over there. And that is the way we uh, calculate the, the torque and also the thrust on the shaft. I'll explain you later on with a small animation movie. So about monitoring, we have uh, a few monitoring options. The first of all of them is the, the PEM2 touchscreen, which is a quite simple uh, basic touchscreen showing you torque, shaft speed and RPM, and also average torque and uh, shaft speed and RPM. So basic monitoring for the, the T-Sense and also uh, for the TT-Sense, the, the thrust and torque sensor. So this is how it, uh, how it looks like. Over here you have the uh, torque sensor, we have a control box, and the control box is connected to uh, the touchscreen, PEM2 touchscreen, a basic touchscreen. Well, the next monitoring system we have is the PEM4 efficiency monitoring system. And I was in uh, London uh, last week at a different uh, seminar, and there was also a gala dinner, and. Uh, I was uh, the one who was asked to uh, go on the, on, the, on the stage because uh, we won a award, fuel efficiency award for the PEM4 efficiency monitoring system. So it's quite nice and the system is already uh, quite well known in the maritime world. So what we can do with uh, the PEM4 efficiency monitoring system, first of all uh, you have the uh, torque sensor again, like over here. And there's an output from the torque sensor, but you can also have a lot of different uh, other outputs which you connect to the signal processing unit, the box over there. So you can connect, for example, a maximum of 12 P22 flow meters. So that way you can uh, monitor uh, a maximum of six consumers, like main engines, like gen sets, 
like maybe uh, a boiler or even loop oil consumption of your uh, two-stroke engine. You'll, you also can have an input of a speed log, uh, you can have NMEA input of GPS, and even if there's a sharp generator, you can have that one as an input also. This, we put all the signals, so we put all the signals together in this uh, signal processing unit, and uh, we have a, a nice touchscreen, PAM4 touchscreen, showing you all the KPIs, key performance indicators, which uh, will interest you because uh, a lot of them uh, are uh, dealing with fuel consumption and that kind of things. Like, for example, the specific fuel oil consumption of the main uh, engine. We have uh, power, shaft power, we have uh, thrust of the propeller, but we also have the fuel consumption per consumer, which is in, uh, in this screen. In the second screen, we have uh, the kilograms per hour for the main engine, the kilograms per hour for uh, gensets, and we can go up to a maximum of six consumers. The next screen is uh, about uh, the total fuel consumption per type of fuel, and we have many, many more screens, which will, uh, I will not show to you uh, this time because it will be become a little bit boring. And the last one, last but not least, of course, uh, we also have a Modbus output to your uh, AMS Shipton uh, system on board of the ship, so the alarm and monitoring system. Well, this is the, the main subject of my uh, presentation uh, today. The TT sense, that's the thrust and torque sensor. This sensor is able not to only monitor uh, the torque at the propeller shaft, so the power at the propeller shaft, but also the propeller thrust. And that's uh, one big difference because this uh, sensor is able to uh, accurately measure the thrust at the, the propeller shaft. And that's the only one which is able of uh, doing so. Just to show you, this is uh, displacement at the shaft due to torque. Delta Y over there. Then we're talking about uh, displacement due to the twisted shaft, uh, displacement of about, about 100 to 150 micrometers. And when you're looking at uh, thrust, compression of the shaft due to propeller thrust, then over here you're looking at uh, Delta X, which is uh, only 5 to 10 micrometers. So very small compression of the shaft. And there was a, is one other thing, you also have to measure the temperature of the shaft. So altogether, it makes it uh, a very difficult story, but we managed to succeed and to have a very accurate uh, thrust sensor able to uh, do uh, measurements uh, with accuracy far below 1%. And just to imagine, uh, we need accuracy of 25 nanometers, which is uh, equal to five seconds of beard growth. Just imagine five seconds of beard growth, that's almost nothing. Okay, I like to start up a movie. I hope the movie also likes to start up uh, with me. Yep. So just to show you uh, the principle of the, the optical sensor. Over here, the optical sensors are mounted on the shaft, on the propeller shaft. For the thrust sensor, we have four optical sensors. And when the shaft is uh, subject to torque, you will measure this displacement over here at the detector cell, and when it's subject to thrust, we measure the other displacement at the other direction. So the same cell can do both. Nice uh, movie, but I'll just uh, skip the rest of it. <coughs> so, over here is my, uh, my own small uh, ship design. And just to explain you, when you measure the thrust over there, you almost directly measure the resistance of your ship. So it's clear, thrust is over there, and when the, the ship is sailing constant speed, <coughs> resistance of sh the ship is over there. And you also measure directly your propeller performance. So two very big advantages of measuring uh, the thrust instead of measuring the power at the propeller shaft. And thrust output is, of course, very uh, important value because it's directly related to uh, hull fouling, to, for example, uh, propeller fouling, uh, to uh, the quality of your paint, and a lot of other things, like also uh, trim of the vessel. When you just change the trim of the vessel, you will see that also the thrust uh, will be uh, changing a little bit, and that's the things you like to see. Some uh, real-life examples. 
Uh, this is uh, some examples of uh, uh, creating awareness on shore, so that they send the data from the ship to the shore, and they make uh, very nice graphs. In this case, it was a, a graph of a very big container vessel, which was uh, equipped with a thrust sensor, and just uh, noting down the, the thrust values in certain conditions, put them in, the, in, the, in this graph, and you can see within 10 months, the, the added resistance of the ship was almost 14% due to hull fouling. So that's uh, a lot of money, even calculated with the, the quite low uh, heavy fuel prices nowadays. And the other picture, the picture over there, is about propeller efficiency. You can, can see about the same propeller performance is going down within uh, one year, and decrease in performance is uh, also uh, well 5% also quite high, which is about uh, 200,000 US dollars in this case. I will not say to you that you will earn, all earn this uh, kind of uh, huge amounts, but it's worthwhile monitoring your system, that's for sure. So there's another example. This is an example of creating awareness on board. This is a hopper dredger, and there's a typical uh, sailing schedule for a hopper dredger. It will be... Uh, Dredging over here, getting a lot of sand, then we'll go full speed to the shore, start rainbowing, and then go full speed back again. So it will do this uh, kind of uh, things uh, many times a day, maybe 10 or 20 times a day. And there's a lot of maneuvering, and also the fact that they are sailing full speed over there, well, tells you a lot about uh, the way they are acting. They are actually quite in a hurry. So in this case, the ship owner decided to do it in a different way. They said, okay, we'll just decrease our speed a little bit and also do maneuvering a little bit more softly, not like uh, we go full pitch ahead and then go uh, just uh, full pitch astern. So they did it like that, they had our thrust uh, sensor on board, they had our fuel uh, sensors, fuel uh, flow meters on board, we're looking at the PEM4 monitoring screen and they were able to just uh, decrease fuel consumption with 10%. That's very nice, they said. But, uh, well, the funny thing was actually that uh, at the end of the day, they transported the same amount of sand. So it's like uh, driving your car uh, through Athens full speed at every traffic light, then stopping again, then going full speed again. In the end, you will know that uh, there's no reason for it, for, because it will take a lot of time anyway. Well, just a small conclusion. Um, trust monitoring, fuel efficiency monitoring is not about uh, getting the uh, tall apples in the top of the tree, it's just getting the low hanging fruit because uh, your investment is a uh, flow meters, a torque meter, it's not a very big investment and what you can earn with it is uh, quite a lot of money because uh, the fuel price is still uh, quite high. And in the end, uh, our captain uh, Haddock is uh, very happy with it. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you.